Hey, would you like to join us on our 60-foot sail cutter built in 2007, the Willem Johannes? We take you with us on our journeys and explain a little more about our choices, why we do what we do, the trouble we run into, and the fun stuff. We take you with us in rougher, and calmer waters. Join us in our story and that of our dog, Riff. we buy the necessary local products from roadside stalls. The loot? Strawberries, fresh eggs, apple cider and apple vinegar for the salad. We raise the anchor to set sail. As usual, there is a lot of mud hanging from the anchor. But with a quick polish, we remove it expertly and quickly. We then sail out through the narrow passage again, heading for our next destination. Soon decide that this will be Jules Minde, especially after reading in the René Floats pilot that this is a comfortable harbour that is easy to approach. Last but not least, the wind is also favourable for sailing there. So we prepare to hoist the sails. Now to do so, we also lower the keel by one meter so that we can sail more windward. This can be done safely now that we have left the shallows of the anchorage near Diefik. When hoisting the sails, by the way, we make use of our e-wincher, which makes our life aboard the Willem Johannes so much easier. Soon we notice that there is quite a lot of current between the islands, but more on that later. In some parts, the current is so strong that we have to steer almost 45 degrees extra. Now, Riff undergoes it all calmly and, as usual, observes everything that happens on the shore. We pass the two bridges at Middlefart and decide to continue our journey.
Here, the current is really extremely strong, but fortunately largely in our favor. By the way, the current areas are marked in the map with red wavy lines so that you know what to expect there. We find a nice spot along the quay in Jules Minde and are just in time to walk the dog before the rain starts pouring. That should not spoil the fun and fortunately we find a bistro within walking distance. We go to bed early and put on Riff's favorite video. It's always funny to see how he reacts to this. The next day the sun finally shines and we decide to refill the diesel tanks now that we're also close to a bunkering station. In addition, we buy bread for breakfast and lunch at the local bakery and some fish for dinner as we plan to make another midday sail to the picturesque Isle of Samsø. Once outside, we see that the wind is much to our favor for lower tune. So that's going to be our destination. Riff has been on board for six months and has learned to pee on his turf. Only the wave actions of the last longer days of travel has destroyed his confidence to do his business on the foredeck. Since he's always looking for grass right away on land, we decide to bring that on board to see if that will work. Unfortunately, the grass is only consumed. Do any of the viewers have any tips how we can get our dog to pee on deck again? On beautiful Thune, we do the tourist route. Truly an island worth seeing. It's the only island, perhaps in the world even, where the church and the lighthouse are integrated into one. Again, fresh goods are offered along the road and yet again we decide to fill our refrigerator with these. Once back in the harbour, we watch the ferry which carries people and goods to and from the island. And we enjoy the tremendous quietness of the harbour for a while before we choose our next destination. Now instead of cleaning windows, we clean the solar panels so that they can do their best work during the trip to recharge the batteries. The next destination is the Danish Isle of Anholt, just under 60 miles sailing from Thune. The sailing is calm and after the wind subside, we increase the engine a little more to keep the momentum going. Meanwhile, everyone takes their rest. Once we arrive at Anhalt, we fry the tuna steak we bought fresh in Julesminde, while Riff has fun with his building blocks. These blocks are the best dog toys imaginable, bought on a flea market for two and a half euros during King's Day. Arriving at Anhalt, we have a little challenge getting to our mooring place. A fisherman is lying sideways on the quay, making the passage very narrow. With some steering, however, we safely reach our mooring for the next two days. 
We do this because the next day the wind will be too strong for a comfortable crossing to Gothenburg. We're not the only ones, as we are soon joined by the Dutchman, a wooden spout that waits for the more favorable winds alongside with us. We walk around the island where our Rith has a great time on the beach. Unholt is a sparsely populated island with just 160 inhabitants, whereas it is 22 and a half square kilometers in size. A deliberately low number of people so that nature is given optimal space. An excellent island for walking and cycling. After pulling the bikes out, we lubricate the loose parts before exploring the island. On the way, we enjoy a Danish lunch, not a krompus, but a shrimpus, a croissant filled with shrimp cocktail, in other words. After a quick visit to the local supermarket, we refill the propeller shaft grease pot. A dirty but necessary job to keep the propeller shaft lubricated. Of course, with the help of Riff and lovely assistant Patty. It is important to check that the bolts are tightened properly, otherwise the grease pot will not work. Riff, meanwhile, keeps watch and checks whether the wind has eased yet. But judging by the fishing boat that has just set sail, it is better to wait a little longer for the wind to calm down. The next morning the wind has eased slightly. And having departed from the lower shore, we raise the sails in the harbour mouth and motor sail out of the harbour towards Gothenburg, in Sweden. The wind turns out to be a bit stronger than predicted, allowing us to make nice speeds. But as also predicted, the wind subsides later that day. That means motor sailing again, because it's a pretty rough sea. We marvel at the wind against waves situation we experience, especially the last part towards Gothenburg. Later, we read on the Sailors Forum Zell Nord about the currents created by the influences of weather and wind in this part of the sea, the Kattegat. A handy app that gives insight into this current is the DMI app. And when we click on it, we indeed see that the current can be considerable in this part of our trip. This is indicated in the app in the orange-yellow section. If only we had known this a little earlier. So the final stretch is extremely uncomfortable due to the wave action and current against wind. Riff in particular suffers, donating his dog treats to Neptune.
But like every sailing trip, the final destination is always calm and peaceful. We reach the Gothenburg archipelago in the early evening and soon find a quiet anchorage near Kungsö. We quickly put the dinghy in the water so Riff can stretch his legs ashore. He has already made up for his donated meal by now eating his bowl completely empty. On board, we enjoy a beautiful sunset and go to bed early. Obviously, to let Riff out of the island again early in the next morning. After contacting Mark, a sailor's friend from the Quattordici, we managed to secure a spot in Ökere. This is a nice harbour with connections to Gothenburg, so our boys can get on board relatively quickly on Friday and Saturday, using public transportations, meaning an airplane, two buses and a ferry. The trip there is a taster for the area we will explore extensively next week. The archipelago of the islands around Gothenburg. It is a mix of sailors and fast boats here, sailing past you at maximum speed. In the harbour mouth we are met by Mark, who guides us to our docking spot. A nice corner is reserved for us where once again the necessary helmsmanship skills are needed to moor. But the ship and crew handles fine in these conditions. That afternoon, the first of our two sons, Rob, arrives by ferry and we pick him up at the last leg by dinghy, saving him the final bus ride. And in the evening, we have our midsummer barbecue on deck and Riff gets a chance to have fun with Billy. A welcome change from all that rocking the past few days. On Saturday, the, our second son Bram arrived in port, having received the same treatment with the dinghy. <laughs> As a belated Father's Day present, 20 bags of yogurt gums are a welcome treat for the upcoming sailing trips. So a complete family on board next week, and we are looking forward to it. Follow our adventures, our stories on Instagram and YouTube. We also have a website, sailingwillemjohannes.nl